Welcome to the DevOps Days edition of Tell Me Something I Don't Know. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a concept that I blatantly copied from a podcast. And the whole idea pretty much works like this. People who have signed up, and maybe some other uh, improvisers from the crowd, will come in and tell us things that we don't know. Meaning these are interesting facts and nifty things about our industry or science or engineering or something that's sort of relevant to what we do in an entertaining fashion. Then our extra snarky judges, extra snarky I said, um, will ask them very, very embarrassing questions about their facts. And we have a real-time fact checker, Nati Cohen, who will verify that they're not lying to us. So. Have a big round of applause for our, uh, for our panel of judges. Oad from Namogu. <laughs> Mikhail Awanzam from uh, AppFire. <laughs> Matty Cohen from here. <laughs> I'm your moder moderator, Gil Zellner. No thing. Anyway, the first person up is Shachar Mintz. <laughs> so, Shachar. Thank you. I hope I'm uh, the first and the last, so I will win. Um, <laughs> Let's talk about counters. Uh, basically, it's very easy, just increment a, a, a number. Uh, but when you write, want to write it consistently to disk, uh, you have to lock the counter, read it, increment, and write, and then release for the next one to, uh, uh, to increment the counter. <coughs> um, the problem starts when uh, we get to scale. Yeah. If you think, on, you know, like hard disks, uh, spinning disks, it take 10 milliseconds to just seek for, for where the, the counter is. Um, so you are very limited in how many writes you can, you can do. So if you will look about 1,000 concurrent uh, counters, which you get to 10 seconds. And, you know, if you look at uh, YouTube scale, for example, that they show you the, the counters, uh, you will wait two days for Gangnam style counter to to appear. Um, so, how did uh, Google uh, scale counters? They shot them to many counters. Uh, let's say thousands of um, sub counters, uh, and when they update a counter, they pick one randomly, increment it, then asynchronically read all the shards send them, and send them uh, back to the user. OK. And that takes less than 20 milliseconds. OK. So. First of all, is this true? The checker is checking. OK. Do we have an extra, extra snarky question, say? It's here. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. Do we have an extra snarky question to ask him? How can it help me become richer? How can it help me become richer? Well, if you will have to increment uh, a number in your bank account. Nice. I know. Have you tried to scale the counters using blockchain, Docker, and Kubernetes together? No. I actually, actually, the, the, the post is before Gangnam Style. I, I don't know if it's still hot water. I don't know if it's still working in production. Okay, so so it's true. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Next up, Avi six eight three six four. So Avi, tell us. So the reason they did not call my name is because they asked who you are, and I am Ahmed. Um, okay. So uh, my fact is. It's very low. Um, anyone know about Docker here? I guess. No. Uh, <laughs> and does anyone know Minecraft here? Yes. Yeah. Woo. Um, so, for some reason, unknown reason, I don't think anyone knows or ever uses it, uh, Docker itself created a virtualization and management tool for Docker. For some reason, you can actually flip a switch and 
remove a container or delete a container or create a container on a Minecraft uh, UI. And uh, that's very useless. Thank you. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Extra snarky judges. Do you have anything interesting to say? Do we have an answer checker? So it's true? Yes, I'm true now. I actually saved it. We, have even, we even have a picture. We have a picture, but we're not connected, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Uh, okay. The Can judges you? think the story is so ridiculous that we don't have comments. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you have Kubernetes API UI in Minecraft? <laughs> I guess it will be a good idea. I don't see why not. Uh, it's useless in the same amount of, uh, <laughs> of ridiculousness. I'm just giving you Ignite talks for... <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up we have Evgeny from Product. Hello, hello. Uh, I was in the audience when they shot the Minecraft demo. Uh, in Barcelona. So I have a personal story. Last week I was at the family dinner. There was this uh, small kid who is in uh, grade A, right? Uh, and he was very excited playing the cyber challenge. Anybody has kids who play the cyber challenge? Anyway, um, and the cyber challenge is kind of games, like, you know, there's this game when there's a, a square and you need to move the car out of the square by moving all the pieces inside, for example, or anyway, it's these small games. And his father asked me, Why, what is cyber? Okay, what is cyber? And I was very um, surprised to know that I know the answer. Okay, and I told him, you know, cyber, it comes from the science of cybernetics. Anybody knows what cybernetics is? Cybernetics is the science of learning how people and systems interact. Not computer systems, any systems. And they, it talks about how systems are comprised of uh, entities that have relationships, okay? And the relationships are even more important than the entities. Now we all know that this is a hot topic in DevOps system thinking. But did you also know that cybernetics has its origin in a known Greek word, linavet? Anybody knows how it is in Greek? Linavet? Other than Sharon? Anybody? <laughs> Nobody knows, only Sharon knows. Anyway, cybernetics is actually comes from the word Kubernetes in Greek. So that's another touch point for DevOps. Um, yeah, and that's my fact that you probably didn't know. Thank you. Cyber and DevOps. Wait, wait, wait. Extra snarky judges. So basically, if I use Kubernetes, I have cyber, but I still need big data to sell my startup. Is that correct? <sighs> I don't think big data is uh, relevant anymore, but you do need AI. Today, so if you have Kubernetes and you have Greek people and you have AI, uh, you can say that you are kind of a cyber AI startup, and that's very hot today. You, you can sell it. That you can sell. The big data is not hot anymore. And the story was good, but I didn't hear the word Docker, so I'm giving you one. Mm. Point for that. But I wear the Docker T-shirt. But I wear I wear the T-shirt. That's point twenty. It says Docker on the T-shirt. Hey, 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 hey! The judges get to be snarky. You don't. <laughs> How long did you stay in the dinner before they threw you out of the room after this, uh, <laughs> after this lecture? Uh, the father asked me, me the question. He was surprised about, uh, with the lecture that he got as the response. But he, he asked the question, so he couldn't get away. It was his home. No. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a good strategy. Trap not snarky. Day. Not snarky. <laughs> so, so now we all have a new interview question. Just after asking full stack engineer which way the stack grows in x86, we can now ask cyber engineers how to use Kubernetes. You can ask engineers if they have a cybernetics degree. Yeah, why not? I think that's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Evgeny. Next up, we have Gilad. Gilad, TikTok. Okay, I have a slightly less boring, uh, amazing fact. Um, apparently 5,000 people uh, annually get hospitalized in the US 
for uh, burnt buttocks. The reason is, uh, believe it or not, that they all try to check if the flatulence is, can ignite. <laughs> That's our fact. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I'm so, I so hate you right now for my upcoming ads. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to find this fact on Google, but Google says we have a cancer, so I'm still not sure. <laughs> also AIDS, apparently. We have nothing to comment on that, I think. I've embarrassed myself enough. <laughs> That's honesty, not part of our code of conduct today. Yeah. <laughs> in all honesty, I think this fact doesn't smell right. Um. I have a story that I'm pretty confident you don't know. I'm going to have to twist myself into some pretzels to relate it back to our industry, but let's see how I do. You have a two minute. Uh, Got it. Two minutes. All right, two minutes. Good luck. So, you've heard of The Wizard of Oz, the movie The Wizard of Oz? Everybody? Okay, good. So it was written by a guy named L. Frank Baum who died in 1920, uh, but they made a movie based on that book. And there was a character in the movie named Professor Marvel, who's also the wizard at the end in Oz. And when they were casting him, they wanted to costume him, and they wanted him to have a regal-looking jacket, but a jacket that looked like it was tattered because he was kind of a, a hustler. He was like a, a fake uh, salesman kind of guy. So... They went to wardrobe, they tried to put together this coat, nothing looked right. They finally decided to go to a thrift store and find a jacket. They went and found the jacket that they used in the movie, and during the filming, the actor looked in the pocket, and in the sewn into the pocket in the inscription was the name L. Frank Baum. It was the author's jacket. That it, who lived in New York that somehow found its way all the way over to Hollywood and ended up being in the movie. And that is verifiable. You can look it up, but good luck looking it up. <laughs> now, how it relates to our industry is, um, you know, in DevOps, as long as we have the right systems in place, we can always trace a chain of events back to their start and get, to, get into the root causes of things. That's what I'm going to say there. <laughs> Man, that's some Chinese contortionist level of getting right? back to our industry. All right. <laughs> I told you. What do you got for me? Hit me. Is it true? It's a legend. It's a legend. Oh. Uh-oh. Audience, ooh. 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 I'm ooing myself. Good job. <laughs> yeah? So can we have the same quote in Minecraft also? The what now? The quote. Can we have it also in Minecraft? Yeah, Besides sure. Like Orchestrating containers, but also like why not telling legends, which is legend. Don't take it as a fact. I'm it's, sorry, sir. It'll be legendary. It's very cool, but we cannot verify it. Oh come on! All right, I'm gonna find a verifiable link. Can I do that, or is it only the judges? Uh, you have only the judges the end, can be smart. Till the end of the session. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Sagi <laughs> uh, I hope you all heard about Watson. IBM's AI engine. It was an AI agent that compare, competed against uh, other people in Jeopardy, the quiz show. And it crushed the humans, uh, practically. Something like 37,000 points against about 4,000. And it got mistakes, and one of them was uh, kind of uh, interesting. The category was the U U.S. cities, and he got some uh, definition, and, the, uh, and he answered Toronto, Canada, for a U.S. city. And uh, later, the Watson uh, was developed further to uh, research even more topics, like uh, uh, medical, so it won't uh, give you cancer, uh, unless you have some. Uh, Basically, it's an AI engine that looks information by itself and uh, can learn uh, from credible sources by itself. And, but uh, probably geography is not a strong topic for him. Okay. Uh, extra snarky judges. 
I think not all the people know, but behind the story, they run in mainframe with COBOL to implement that. <laughs> Is that correct? I don't work at IBM, and I, I don't, uh, didn't look at their GitHub, so I have no idea if they use COBOL. And thanks again, IBM, for sponsoring today. <laughs> <laughs> Can you confirm? Yes. The checker, confirm. Confirm. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Next up, Danielovich. Uh, so my fact is even a question to the crowd and to the judges. How old is Nintendo company? Like how very old are they? 130 years old. It actually started as a card company until 1960s, then it became a toy company. And then in the 70s, it became the console company that we know today. Well, it's not an no unknown fact, probably, because other gamers are here too, but for me, it's always surprising that a company can succeed today and not become, not, not start from a startup. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, okay. Extra uh, anything to say? It's not dockerized. Yeah, I know it's not <laughs> Thank you, Danielovich. Thank you. Next up, Liran, Liran Vaknin. Oh. Hi guys. So, uh, in a quick raise of hands, how many of you ruthlessly killed ducks uh, in the 80s or 90s? I mean like virtual ducks in Duck Hunt? Yes. Anyone please? Yeah, that's it? No, oh, a lot of young people here. Uh, does any of you know how the light gun worked, actually? In the game, you were shooting, like pointing a gun at the TV. Yeah, in Duck Hunt. You were pointing a gun at the TV, press the trigger, and the duck will die. How did it work? You're the judge. <laughs> so the color on the TV. Okay, so this is something I hear a lot. It sees colors, it calculates colors, or something like that. But it's, yeah, I know it's not the. <laughs> yeah, so many people think of uh, things that are quite complicated. The truth is that it's a pretty simple solution. All the gun has inside is a photodiode, which can detect light changes, and the trigger, which can send uh, the signal to the console. Basically, once you pull the trigger, the screen blanks for one frame. It just becomes completely black. And then there, is, there appears a white square around the duck. And then uh, the console can calcul calculate if you hit it or not, because of the light change from black to white. If you have multiple targets, you just add, you know, you, you flash each target one, one at a time. Uh, and that's basically it. It's super cool. But some of you say, oh, wait, I will just like use to point the gun at the, at the light and pull the trigger and all the ducks will die. So this is a previous implementation when all the, uh, the entire screen will flash uh, in white. But Nintendo fix it in order to uh, get ahead of the cheaters, I guess, yeah. So, that's it. Extra snarky judges. Can you implement this today using AWS Lambda? Sure, sure. <laughs> it's all serverless, it's dockerizable, and yeah, you can scale it to infinity and beyond. See, seems to me like a much more interesting topic for dinner than the other guy with the cyber. cyber <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. So, I, I'm sorry, I'm pulling rank here. No more Docker jokes. That's it. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> okay, next up, uh, did you submit this to, oh, sorry, Omri. Um, it relates to software development and testing. Um, apparently, when they developed the F-16, F-16, if I'm not mistaken, was one of the, maybe the first aircraft which was like fly-by-wire, which means you weren't technically moving control planes by moving uh, pieces of metal and uh, pulleys and cranks. It was actually a computer behind the scenes mapping the uh, pilot's uh, movement of the joystick and moving the control planes because the F-16 was very aer aerodynamic but highly unstable. So everything was left for the computers, which is basically a bad idea if you're flying like Mach 2. And early on, uh, luckily while testing, 
they discovered, discovered a very lethal, interesting fact. When uh, a test pilot was running the simulator and he crossed the equator, the uh, airplane turned upside down and crashed. And this is because nobody took into account that uh, when you cross the equator, the numbers would start to be negative. And so they didn't accommodate for that. So uh, that's an interesting uh, point to take. Next time you put on testing or think of the unlikely scenarios which you crash in production. Wait that's up, it. wait up, wait up. First of all, uh, I actually know that this is true. Okay. Uh, true. Uh, but extra snarky judges, what do you have to say? I don't have the laptop. I believe it's false because nobody does testing. It's always in production, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so when you said testing, it was suspicious. But other yeah. than that. Well, do you have any questions? No question, but I'll just say that thank God I'm not flying people you know, in, in the air. So. Wonderful. Okay. Well, actually, I'd like to point out that this is the first fact that is actually demonstrably true because of like, the pilot. But uh, that's it. Thank you very much, Amri. Okay, thank you. Right. And I believe this is the last one. We have Florian. So Florian, what is your cool fact? Well, my cool fact is of course a question because we're supposed to ask a question, yeah. right? A leading question. So imagine um, you want to get like that super amazing limited edition sneaker that you've been dreaming of all your life. And every time you try, like some bastard snaps it ahead of you and you, you luck out. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, is an option. There is a more peaceful option. So, um, hire goons. yeah, you can hire goons, exactly. So, uh, you can hire something called a sneaker bot, which is a service that buys sneakers for you. And also, the good thing is, um, you can pay using Bitcoin. And also, uh, it runs on Kubernetes. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, you are disqualified for making a Docker joke. <laughs> no, no, I didn't make a Docker joke. Yeah, I'm just stating facts. So, yeah, no, this is actually true. So, um, there's like an industry of like dodgy characters that, um, that hire uh, the smallest possible VMs on cloud providers and run uh, services that uh, like basically DDoS uh, websites of sneaker companies or like other limited edition merchandise like uh, Star Wars cooking pots or whatever Wait, else. Is it, this is the peaceful option? <laughs> this is the peaceful option. Yeah, I mean like as opposed to shooting someone, right? Um, yeah, so uh, and Reality is subjective, dude. Okay, fair, fair. I mean, like, sure, it's, it's, it's certainly the less peaceful option towards, uh, towards your friendly cloud provider because rumor has it that they don't like this very much because the sneaker bots obviously um, use up a lot of resources and don't make a lot of money. So, yeah, don't use them, but you can look them up. You can buy them for, like, $325 or something like that. Okay. Extra snarky judges. It's tough, man. Like, I think we still haven't laughed about Docker enough, so I'm just going to say Docker, and again Docker. <laughs> and, um, yeah, my question is, will this solve the Middle East crisis, like the world peace and everything? Maybe. Bot. Maybe it does. I mean, maybe you can, um, you can hire a bot to... Uh... I said snarky, goddammit. <laughs> okay, okay, do you use Darknet? <laughs> uh, well, I mean... I didn't look in the dark net, but you can even find them in the not so dark net. So, uh, but I think they're still dodgy enough. Would you recommend the sneakers bot that's configuration is YAML or JSON? Uh, only YAML. YAML is the only option. Right. Just reminding you all, this is not a Kubernetes conference. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, Florian. And now, now we go to the voting stage. So this is how it's going to work. Each one of the judges will uh, suggest the winner. And in case there is a tie, we will go to the crowd for, uh, for assistance. So, Ohad. I would go with Florian. With Florian. Why? <laughs> Interesting fact. Okay. I want to buy back to the future shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Michael? 
The Docker Minecraft. The Cyber Kubernetes, it has uh, twice the buzzwords. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we are going to go to crowd voting. And the way we're going to do this is the extra scientific way of you making noise and me trying to estimate which one was the loudest. <laughs> so, uh, the first one was? Florian. Sneakerbot. Sneakerbot. Make your noise for Sneakerbot. Next up. Alvi. Next up. The organizers are entirely unbiased. <laughs> Cyber is actually Kubernetes. This one, unfortunately, goes to Avi. Avi, get your ass up here! See that? What? Here. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, I would like just to point out, I would just like to thank our judges. I would like to thank our amazing speakers. And we have open spaces, and then we have Ignite where we get to be even snarkier, but with slides. So stay put, don't go anywhere, it's gonna be awesome.